Welcome back to my channel everyone where I do tech reviews and talk about other tech related things. Today I'll be talking about the Fitbit Versa 3 and what features you should expect from the watch, when is it going to get released, and maybe why you want to wait and hold off buying the Versa 2 or the Charge 4 or anything in the Fitbit family if you really love the Fitbit watches. So the number one thing that the Fitbit Versa 3 is going to get is the GPS. And the reason I say this is because the Fitbit Charge 4 that was released in the past 3 to 6 months had, did receive the GPS. And they put it into a small size package fitness band. Which means that they should have no problem putting it into the uh, Versa 3 and also being able to keep the same price point of the Versa 2. And in that case I think it's great. For number one, it's going to make it a very competitive watch in the fitness smartwatch area in respect to Samsung and Apple, which already had built-in GPS, and this is what the Versa series was lacking. So this will make it a true, true watch. So I'd really recommend that you wait for this to get released before grabbing the Versa 2 if you really like the Versa 2, but you want that GPS feature. So since Google bought Fitbit, I consider that a plus. Yes, there's still an acquisition process and the privacy concerns, but their software team is gonna add a lot of features and a lot of support that Fitbit was lacking. And the number two thing that I expect them to help them out on is they're gonna add the Google Assistant. I've actually seen, seen rumors and snapshots of development code for the Fitbit Versa 2 showing that it's going to receive the Google Assistant and replace Alexa. Which means the Versa 3 is definitely going to have Google Assistant and voice commands as soon as they get released. And for that to work properly and on the same level as other smartwatches, the Versa 3 needs to have a speaker, which I bet you it will. Because it currently has a microphone, which is great, but it you get text feedback. You don't actually hear the feedback from from the watch. So adding this feature, the speaker to it, you'll be able to make calls over your watch, having your phone next to you, you'll be able to do text messages and have text messages read to you, which will be a game changer. This will make it on par with the Apple Watch, the Samsung watches, where you'll be able to listen and communicate with the watch without actually having to get out of it. And especially if they keep the same price point of the Versa 2, which is $200, and they keep it for the Versa 3, can you imagine a $200 Fitbit fitness watch that has six days battery life, has Google Assistant, has GPS, and many more other features I'm gonna talk about. How on par that would be with Apple? I would wanna to wanna to buy an Apple. Why would you buy an Apple watch for $400 when you can get a Fitbit for half the price with more battery life, sleep tracking, and more fitness things and data? So that's why I think number two is the speaker. So the other two features that I believe are definitely going to happen is one, they're going to make Spotify offline possible. So currently the Versa 2 has Spotify, but for a premium subscription, you can only control it through your phone. You can't actually store it on the watch, even though the watch has storage. So to be on par with Apple Music and be on par with Samsung that can actually have, can store the songs, they need to implement this to make people happy. So definitely, I think in the Versa 3 iteration, they're gonna make sure that Spotify songs are able to be on the watch so you can take your phone out of the equation and call it a day and just use your watch as a fitness tracker, music controller, music storage, and everything else. And the number four thing that I believe is gonna happen since Google bought Fitbit and they're turning the Fitbit OS into some kind of combination of Fitbit and Google or Wear OS, whatever they're gonna do is gonna be very interesting. Thing I think is gonna happen is Fitbit currently has Fitbit Pay on the Versa 2, but Fitbit Pay is not used by many banks or many uh, coffee shops or stores or other uh, companies that you can use it at. And I bet you if they take Fitbit Pay and turn it into Google Pay, and I really hope they do that, this will make people happy. Because now Google Pay is already universal across a lot of banks, it's known by many companies, and it's used everywhere else like Apple Pay. So if they do that, once again, Fitbit will start being on par with Apple. They'll be able to do everything Apple does, which is be able to pay anywhere, be able to use music anytime. But the kicker for this is, I bet you that they're gonna keep the price point of $200 to keep their customers happy because they already have a good baseline so they're just adding these couple, couple of extra features. 
And this is what I think the features that are definitely going to be in there. And I'm going to tell you a couple of features that I feel like might happen. Why would they, they'll happen? And maybe just some nice to haves for the watch. So one of the big nice to haves for the watch that I could possibly see happening, but not necessarily is currently the Fitbit Versa 2. There's a big bezel and it's a little big. I can see them making the bezel of the watch a little smaller. So giving it more screen. And in that perspective, since they made the bezel smaller, they can actually make the watch smaller, the physical dimensions of it. So the screen stays bigger, but the watch shrinks a little, which would look better on a lot of people's wrists because the Versa 2 is a little chunky compared to the original Versa. So I can definitely see that happening and hopefully they do that. But I, the way I've seen their watches kind of evolve, I, can't, I cannot see the Versa 3 being the one where they remove the bezels. The other thing that I believe that could possibly happen is currently there is S, uh, SPO2 sensor, which is a blood oxygen sensor that is on the Versa 2 and the Versa and the Versa Light that tracks you during sleep. But like Garmin, Garmin has a VO2 max, which measures your blood oxygen level um, and oxygen as you're working out during workouts. So hopefully they can add this feature or use the implementation of the sensor that they currently have in the, the watch to use it for fitness tracking. So hopefully they'll take that sensor that's already in there and make it work during workouts, which I cannot see why they haven't done that yet, but who knows, maybe they have a bigger story for it. But the one kicker that the Fitbit Versa 3 still has over the Apple Watch currently is that it has sleep tracking. And that is definitely one feature when people go for Fitbit. And if that is the reason why you go for Fitbit, let me know. Hit that like button if that's why you buy a Fitbit. Why it's better than Apple. So the sleep tracking is something that's very unique to Fitbit. It has a lot of data analysis behind it. And it has a lot of history from over the years of implementing it. So this is what I believe the Fitbit Versa 3 will have once it gets released. And I believe it's going to get released in September timeframe, maybe closer to December because of the pandemic, but it'll definitely be right before the holidays. So Fitbit can actually get on all these sales and make money off it. So if you're looking for the new new, I would wait till then. But if you want to get something now and you're thinking about the Charge 4 or the Versa 2, check out my comparison above so it can help you guys decide which one is the right one for you. And that's all guys, that's what I believe the Versa 3 will have. And if you have any questions or anything that you are thinking about if the watch will have or how will it function or anything else, please comment down below. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for more of my content. And I hope you guys have a great weekend and a great holiday and st stay tuned for more.